Welcome back to Whence Came You, a Masonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry. Here's your host, Brother Robert Johnson. Welcome back to Whence Came You. This is episode number 380. This week we've got a little bit shorter of a program because I was busy all weekend with a Masonic retreat, uh, getting my Masonic education on, and it was a fantastic time. So the paper I have this week is called The Jewish Influence in the history of Freemasonry. And we'll get into that just one moment here. I do want to make a comment and just thank everybody out there who has been contributing to the program, everybody out there who is being a patron to the Masonic Revival, who has generously made our pins for the show, our producer pins. If you're interested in one of those, go ahead and check out our website, WCYpodcast.com. Dot com where you can pick that up. You can also assist us with monthly donations to help keep the show running and paying all the bills that are associated with uh, putting together something like this, a weekly Masonic program. A quick reminder that we're going to have Brother Todd Creason on the program soon. We're also going to have Brother Scott Hambrecht on, and we've got some other guests lined up this year as well. It's going to be fantastic. And with all that, let's go ahead and get into this week's paper. Reading this one from the Illinois Lodge of Research, volume number 21, page number 50, The Jewish Influence in the History of Freemasonry by Ira Gilbert, Past Master, Past District Deputy Grand Master. Again, reading this from paper, and I will scan it, and I will put it in the app for a download. So if you're looking for the papers and you're going to email me and you're going to say, hey, how do I get the paper? Or, hey, can I get the paper? Please remember they are available in the app. How do you get the app? Go to your Google Play Store or go to the App Store on your iOS device and you will search for an app called the Podcast Source. Download that. When you get it, You're going to open it up, hit search, and type in Whence Came You. Do that, and you'll see it. Add it to your shows. It's totally free. This doesn't cost you anything. Uh, We used to charge for it, but it was developed and done, and we had the option of keep charging for it, and we said, no, it's paid for itself. The people out there have made it available. We don't need to pay for it anymore, so it's free now. Go check it out. But here we go. The Jewish Influence in the History of Freemasonry by Ira Gilbert, Past Master, Past District, Deputy Grand Master. There are many theories regarding the history of our fraternity. The most widely recognized theory is that Freemasonry has its foundations in the operative Masons' lodges in medieval England, Scotland, and Ireland. These origins provide the operative lodges with a structure for those involved in the building of the magnificent churches and castles in those countries. Since those lodges were intimately concerned with providing these edifices for the church, It is natural that there would be a strong Christian influence in Freemasonry. Nevertheless, the ritual and basis for Freemasonry surrounds the building of King Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. There is a narrative encompassing first the building of the tabernacle in the desert after the Hebrew exodus from Egypt, and later in the building of the Temple in Jerusalem. These anecdotes to our brotherhood have their genesis in the Old Testament. It would, therefore, be natural for people of the Jewish faith to be drawn to the teachings of Freemasonry. There is much in the ritual of our degrees that are from Old Testament. The genealogy of those descending from Adam leads to Tubal, Cain. The columns in the entrance to King Solomon's temple were named Boaz and Jachin. The name Hiram is mentioned in the narrative in the Book of Kings and Chronicles connected with the building of King Solomon's temple. The name Hiram Abith may derive from the Hebrew language meaning Hiram, his father. It would not be unnatural, then, for those of the Jewish faith to become interested in becoming Freemasons. As Freemasonry grew among the operative lodges in England, Scotland, and Ireland, as well as operative Masonic lodges in France, Holland, Germany, and other countries, the philosophy became that there was an equality among the lodge members. This included equality of religion and belief, so long as those belonging to the Freemasons were of the male gender and believed in the existence of a supreme being. Unfortunately, it was the custom that entry into an operative Masonic Lodge required a unanimous consent of all the Lodge brethren voting on whether or not to accept the candidate into the Lodge membership. This requirement for unanimous consent to admit a new candidate into apprenticeship allowed for one Lodge brother to keep a prospective candidate from gaining admission into a Lodge. Prejudice reared its ugly head. The prejudicial method of keeping a candidate from gaining apprenticeship was the exception rather than the rule. After the founding of the Grand Lodge in the year 1717, 
a small but not insignificant Jewish presence was seen in Freemasonry. The wording of the Anderson Constitution gave rise to the philosophy that all men are created equal. Thus, in the year 1732, members of the Jewish faith petitioned and were accepted as speculative Masons. In general, there was no discrimination in fact, if not in practice. How did it happen that Jews came to our fraternity? In the 1600s and 1700s in England, Jews were forbidden entry into most, if not all, social organizations. It was only in the lodges of operative Masons with an egalitarian philosophy that permitted membership by Jews. While, for the most part, Jews were not operative Masons, they were accepted into the Masonic lodges as speculative Masons. It was, at this time, that the transition from operative to speculative Freemasonry started. As related above, the Jews that were accepted into the speculative lodges caused some consternation among the general membership. It was during this period of time that the ugly head of prejudice reared itself. Edward Rose joined a lodge, and the debate started regarding the general admission of Jews into Freemasonry. The Masonic philosophy won out, and a Jewish lodge, the Lodge of Israel, was formed in 1793. As Freemasonry spread to other countries, so did the acceptance of Jews spread to the Grand Lodges. In France, Jews were accepted into Freemasonry without exception. In fact, in 1866, a Jew became Grand Master of the Scottish Rite. However, anti-Semitism started to enter French society. Freemasonry also started to become more anti-Semitic. Today, in France, the concept of a belief in a supreme being may not be required in mass in some French Grand Lodges. These Grand Lodges are now clandestine, and not recognized by our Grand Lodge of Illinois. It is not surprising that the nation with the greatest amount of anti-Semitism is Germany. There are three Grand Lodges in Germany. Not all of these German Grand Lodges forbade Jews from membership. The German Lodges that did not admit Jews caused consternation in the Grand Lodges of other European nations. However, while there was this consternation, there was no retaliation against these anti-Semitic German Grand Lodges. Freemasonry first came to the colonies on the North American continent in the early 1600s. There was a note in the archives of the Toro Synagogue in Rhode Island, the oldest synagogue in the United States, the first documented evidence of Freemasonry in the colonies that read as follows, quote, We met at Ye House of Mordecai Campanel, and after synagogue we gave Abram Moses the degrees of Masonry, end quote. This is evidence that Freemasonry was first brought to the colonies by a group of Dutch Jews. The foregoing occurrence in the year 1658. In a letter written by Brother and President George Washington, on the occasion of a visit to King David's Lodge in Newport, Rhode Island, he recognized the Master Moses Sexius, later rose to become Grand Master of Rhode Island from 1802 to 1809. Another Jewish Mason, Moses Michael Hayes, was the organizer of King David's Lodge. He also was given credit for the introduction of the Scottish Rite in the colonies. Hayes was also Deputy Inspector General of Masonry in North America in 1768 and Grand Master of Massachusetts from 1788 to 1792. At that time, Paul Revere served as Deputy Grand Master. Solomon Bush, Joseph Myers, and Abraham Forst were also Jewish Masons who became Grand Master in the colonies. Jewish Freemasons were instrumental in the founding of Freemasonry in seven of the original 13 colonies. In 1793, the cornerstone for a new synagogue in Charleston, South Carolina was accomplished according to the rituals of Freemasonry. Jewish Masons played a prominent part in the American Revolution. It is reported that there were 24 Jewish Masons who were officers in George Washington's army. Throughout the history of the United States, there have been many prominent Masonic Jews, including rabbis. There have been 51 Jewish Grand Masters in the United States. Indeed, the first Grand Master of our current Grand Lodge was Shadrach Bond. People of the Jewish faith have been prominent in Freemasonry from its early founding to the current time. There are over 3,000 Masonic Jews in the state of Israel. In that nation, from May 1873, where the first Israeli lodge was constituted by the Grand Lodge of Canada. In 1871, another lodge was constituted under the jurisdiction of the Grand Lodge of Egypt. The United Grand Lodge of the State of Israel was constituted in 1953 and is now the only recognized Grand Lodge in the state of Israel. There are many parallels between Judaism and the philosophy of Freemasonry. This is to be the topic of another article regarding the Jewish influence in our fraternity. The ritual of Freemasonry leans heavily on the stories of the building of King Solomon's temple in the Old Testament. 
There is much in our ritual that lies on Judaic principles. Not the least of these is the necessity of a belief in a supreme being. The belief in the equality of all men is also a primary concept arising in the Old Testament. The Jewish influence in Freemasonry looms large. This is from the core beliefs in our philosophy to the number of prominent Freemasons that are members of Masonic lodges. For this article, I am indebted to an article by Brother Paul Bessel and articles in the Jewish Virtual Library and the Jewish Encyclopedia. All right, now I just wanted to say thanks again to Right Worshipful Brother Ira Gilbert for putting that paper together for us. It gave us a pretty firm foundation on knowing where much of the Masonic influence in American Freemasonry has come from. And also, thanks to the Illinois Lodge of Research. You can check them out on the web. Just Google Illinois Lodge of Research, and you can find their awesome website. And there's a blog there and some other things. You can sign up to be a member of that if you're interested. Now, I just wanted to quickly run down a few key dates coming up here. Of course, if you're going to be in Kadisha, Lebanon, and attending Lodge, number 1002, well, uh, I will be giving a presentation there on Esoterica 101, March 19th, Gateway Lodge, number 40 in St. Louis, Missouri. March 30th, I'll be in Victorville Lodge in Victorville, California. And then we've got the Masonic Con at Ezekiel Bates, Attleboro, Massachusetts. Not going there to talk or anything. I'm just going there to hang out and have fellowship with my brothers. I'll be there along with John Ruark, Jason Richards, Mike Hambrick, Juan Sepulveda, and a slew of other amazing Masonic talent. And we're really just looking forward to hanging out and having fellowship with everybody. May 27th and 28th, I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, doing some work at the Mount Zion Chapter in Gate City Lodge. May 31st, Lakeshore Lodge, Madison, Ohio. And then June 15th, the big deal, Mid-Atlantic Esotericon in Manassa Lodge, number 182. It's going to be the premiere of a brand new lecture that I have never really given to the general public before. It is the quantum entanglement and the idea of apotheosis. What we're going to do there is uh, focus on kind of the spooky world of physics, the explanation of apotheosis, and the divine secret as it relates to the world religions. And it's also explained through quantum entanglement, so it's really fantastic. And you'll have a great time with this little mind exercise and journey. So, I hope to see you guys all out there. And since you like listening to Masonic Podcasts, you heard me reference John and Jason and Mike and Juan. They're all going to be with me also at the Mid-Atlantic Esotericon. Those guys are all on the Masonic Roundtable. So we do a show every Thursday night at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. We do it live on YouTube. Find us there. Watch, comment interact with us on the show. It's fantastic. Huge thanks to people out there who have been sharing. Recently had a little spike in the number of downloads for the Masonic Radio Theater. Do appreciate that. If you've never heard of that, go ahead and Google that or go on iTunes and check out Masonic Radio Theater. It was a side project that we did. I really left a cliffhanger going on and I will have to finish it at some point in the future. I just haven't found the inspiration to sit down and focus on that. So one day, but huge thanks to people out there who have been downloading that and sharing it. So thank you very much. And, and share this show with all your friends and your Masonic brothers and even the profane who are interested in Freemasonry. Pick a favorite episode and, and uh, let them know. And last but not least, check out the Midnight Freemasons where we've got three articles every single week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Had a little snafu last week on Friday. Uh, I published an article and said it was by somebody, and that was the wrong article. So we changed the byline. I hope you guys caught that. Go back and check it out. That's it. So until next week... Stay on the level. For whence came you, I'm Robert Johnson. Take care. You've been listening to Whence Came You, a Masonic podcast featuring research papers and discussions related to Freemasonry with your host, Brother Robert Johnson. Be sure to join us for our next edition.